Hello, everyone, and thanks for watching. This is part two in a series of how to create fully automated endpoint evaluations. My name is Dan Corrali, and I'm a researcher here at Optiv. And in my first video, I discussed in detail how to create a custom API connector within Power Automate for mandate security validation. This video and part three, it's going to be more focused on creating automated infrastructure using Azure Automation Runbooks as part of a Power Automate Cloudflow. These videos are going to be a little quicker as I've already given several talks and created several videos on the subject. And those videos can be found here. If using Microsoft automation and provisioning environments with automation runbooks is a new concept for you, you may want to check them out. So let's jump in. Now I've already built out most of my Power Automate Cloudflow. And this one is extremely similar to those that I mentioned in the other videos I referenced before. So let's open it up and edit it and kind of show you what's going on here. Like the others, it starts with an email as the trigger. It says if the service address receives an email from this address, and it could be anything, with the subject line, uh, the subject line is endpoint evaluation, it needs to take the next action. And that next action is actually three simultaneous actions using a connector to a program called Plum Sale. That's P-L-U-M Sale. And it's going to look for three different regular expressions, the owner, the IP address, and a test name. It's gonna pull the information out of that email and use it as variables and parameters throughout our flow. The matching regex for owner will become the owner variable. Matching regex for IP will become the IP variable. And the matching regex for test name will become the test name variable. We're going to use these variables to create a resource group within Azure. And that resource group is going to house all of our Azure resources for our endpoint evaluation. What that looks like from the sending email side of things is here. Let me pull this up. Here we have, I'm sending to this address. The subject line is endpoint evaluation. We have an owner. We have two vendors. Those are variables that we haven't gotten to yet. You'll see those a little later on. We have an IP address. Obviously I'm not coming from the IP 1.1.1. Um, and we also have a test name, which is eval1. Let me show you where this information fits into our Azure automation job within our Power Automate flow. I'm just going to minimize these initialized variable actions as well as these apply to each actions. And when I expand create job, I have a subscription, a resource group in an automation account along with a runbook name. And you can see that now those variables are parameters within that runbook. So that runbook name is resource group and it's within that automation account. And it's in the RPA template resource group. I'm also gonna wait for the job to complete before it moves on to the next action. What that looks like in Azure is here. I have my automation account in a specific resource group. The resource group runbook is also listed here. Perhaps I could have gone for a better name. If I go to edit, it would show some sensitive information. So I have a Word document here, and I remove the thumbprint tenant ID and application ID. Runbook will be uploaded to our Git repo so you can download it and use it. The beginning of this runbook requires three parameters the owner, a source RDP address, which is the IP address from the email, as well as a test name. Afterwards, we have our authentication, we can, so we can provision our resources. Then we have some additional parameters defined by the runbook, a resource group, and it will be named as the owner-test-resource group. The location is the central US, the virtual network name, subnet name, they're all going to kind of follow suit here. And it's, it's going to be the owner dash test name dash whatever resource group it is. So we have an understanding of what we're spinning up. 
under each green section, that's the command that you're going to see uh, of what resource is being created in PowerShell, the command used to create provision those resources in Azure, like a, a network, a subnet, and extremely important for troubleshooting and test purposes is a custom security group labeled RDP security group. This is an inbound security rule that allows the tester to RDP to the VMs that will be provisioned later in the flow in case there's any type of automated testing error, which I think it's pretty cool. And I have a completed Power Automate flow that I wanna show you so you can see that the information from the body of the email is extracted correctly and that those regex matches are used as variables in the flow that are in turn used as parameters in this Azure Automation Runbook. And we can see right here, the owner name, the source IP address, as well as the test name. And what that does, if I go to my resource groups within Azure, you'll see that I have a Corrali eval resource group. And I have an RDP security group as well as a network name. If I click on the security group, we're going to see that I have a new inbound rule with my last name, the test name, RDP access over 3389 from the source IP address that was entered in the email. And that is awesome. I think this is a good place to stop for this video in this series. The next video, which will be part three, we're really going to dive down deep into Azure VM creation with automation runbooks and how we can use things like storage accounts and Azure automation together to install agents like the Mandiant Security Validation Agent on each of the VMs that we intend to test, as well as the endpoint vendor agent of choice based upon the information that we submit in the email. So stay tuned for part three, and thank you for watching.